Okay, well, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm really honoured to be part of this seminar, which uh, Dr. Lewis and colleagues so generously share with us. And my sincere apologies, I must have mil miscalculated the uh, time change. So I'll try and speed up my presentation uh, a bit today. So um, I'm here today to tell you that there's more to the ear than meets the eye. It's not just this piece of cartilage you see on the side of your head. It's actually an incredible miracle of natural electromechanical, electrochemical and micromechanical engineering. And it allows us to actually experience vibration turned into consciousness, which is quite a miracle when you think about it. Just trying to get my slide to advance. Come on. There we go. So I've been on an amazing 30-year journey into the ear, and it started because of my mother's unusual hearing problems. She could hear perfectly well, but she couldn't stand loud noise. And there's a name for this, hyperacusis. She also couldn't hear at a cocktail party. And they call this the cocktail party syndrome. And it was so bad for my mother, she had to give up drinking entirely. But I've since discovered that's a very common problem and at least 20 to 30% of people, every time I speak, will put their hands up and say, yes, I had that problem. So we came across sound therapy. And for my mother, it cured not only her hearing problems, but her chronic insomnia, chronic exhaustion, her fear of all things technical and her writer's block. And it ended up with us putting out the first ever portable sound therapy program, which we now have on this little device, writing three best-selling books and helping thousands of people in 72 countries to overcome their chronic, untreatable ear problems. Now, through this process, I gathered knowledge that can transform our understanding of why we have ears, what they are for, how they can be healed, and how by healing the ear, we can heal the entire nervous system. And I've now concluded that mainstream science has some big gaps in its understanding about the ear, how it works, what it does, what it's for, and its potential to heal our entire psyche. And we were given clues and knowledge over 60 years ago by a man referred to as the Einstein of the ear, Dr. Alfred Tomatis. He was a French ear, nose and throat doctor who made some very significant discoveries about the ear. And through his life's work, he developed a sound therapy program which has a unique ability to enhance the performance of not only the ear but the brain and many parts of the nervous system. So I'll tell you a story which demonstrates the depth and power of his work. He was called in at one time to treat an order of Benedictine monks in France. Now, they were a silent order, so they would never speak, but they would sing and chant for hours every day until someone in administration got the bright idea of let's cut out the singing so they can get more work done. And the results of this were disastrous. The monks now were in complete silence inside their heads and they weren't getting any stimulation for their brain and they just retreated in them, into themselves and couldn't function or work or engage with anyone. So when Tomatis was called in, he immediately reinstated the singing and he then treated them with his special filtered sound therapy program, which simply involves listening to classical music, which has been put through a series of special filters for several hours a day to recharge the brain. And the monks did this and they just recovered their verb and energy for life in no time. And many of them were functioning better than they had for years. It was just an extraordinary transformation. So Dr. Tomat has made some key discoveries about sound and the ear. He discovered that we can stimulate the brain with sound because the brain is like a battery and it needs 3 billion stimuli per second for four and a half hours a day to function at optimum potential. This is what Dr. Tomatis showed us. Now, he pointed out that 60% of the cilia, that's the little hair-like cells in the inner ear, 60% of them are in the high-frequency zone, meaning above 8,000 hertz. So what does this tell us? Were they put there for decoration? Well, no, perhaps it tells us that high frequencies are important. But we live with a ceiling on our frequency due to the noise and the damage from our environment most of the time we don't get to hear those frequencies and this blocks our access to our higher brain potential. You see, the ear and the brain are a feedback loop. The ear activates the brain and the brain activates the ear. But extraordinarily, this fact is known only to followers of Dr. Tomatis. 
So we have both afferent and efferent nerves connecting the ear and the brain. Nerves going up from the ear to the brain and nerves going down from the brain to the ear. And believe me, they weren't put there for decoration. Dr. Tomatis also made significant discoveries about the role of sound on the unborn child and how the mother's voice stimulates and activates the brain for healing. And the, the fact that we begin to hear sound at four and a half months in utero. So the sound of the mother's voice is actually building the brain pathways for language before the baby is born. So we've learned that the ear needs four things, protection, protection from loud noise, physical injury, and chemical toxins. It needs nutrients, 90 daily nutrients. It needs warmth, which gives us protection from infections, and it needs stimulation in the form of complex, interesting, meaningful, beautiful, structured, harmonic, harmonic, melodic, high-frequency sound. And this is what we provide with sound therapy. Now, when you think about the senses, we want to hear beauty. We, we don't just want function. You know, we want to be able to hear the beauty of music and the voice, the music of the voices of our loved ones. And I'd like to read you a quote which one of our listeners said. She said, my ears are lighting up with sound therapy. I feel their depth into my head. I'm switching on. My speech has become softer. I'm so amazed by this listening ability. Now my experience of sound therapy has humbled me. I am in awe of sound. And that's just a clue to the amazing wake-up that people experience with listening to our program. So I'm just skipping through a couple of those slides that aren't so relevant to talk about the difference between tomatoes-based sound therapy and other forms of sound healing that are out there. With the tomatoes therapy, we are reactivating and restoring the physical function of the ear using filtration and gating with a device called the electronic ear, which we record the sound through. So it filters the sound so that we are getting continually alternating sounds of high and low tone to actually activate and restore function to the middle ear muscles. And our program, we call it Sound Therapy on the Move. Of all the different tomatoes-based therapies, only our Jowdry Sound Therapy is designed to be used on the move. And we support our program, the full education program of listener support using books, workbooks, videos, email coaching and phone support. So you have all the knowledge to become your own therapist and do the therapy. And the beautiful thing is that because you're just listening as you go about your day, during other activities, it doesn't take any time out of your day to do the therapy. You have the music on low volume and you can just continue with your normal daily activities. There's one of our listeners listening during gardening. So you need to understand, to understand sound therapy, you need to understand the difference between beneficial sounds and detrimental sounds. So any loud sound is damaging for the ear. And low frequency sounds tend to be damaging and draining for our nervous system. What we are looking for and what the brain needs is quiet sounds, but high frequency sounds, such as nature sounds. Nature has so many examples of these bird songs, frogs, running water. These are the sounds that activate the ear, and we just don't get enough of them in today's world. So when we do get these sounds and we use sound therapy, it actually works physically on the muscles in the middle ear. There are two tiny muscles in the middle ear, the hammer muscle and stirrup muscle. These are activated by sound therapy. And that also helps to open the eustachian tube and to normalise so many uh, uh, problems that can occur with the ear when the muscles aren't working and the eustachian tube in some cases becomes blocked and that affects our balance as well. So the sound then goes on to activate the actual organ of corti, the hearing organ, which is inside the cochlea. That's the cochlea, our inner ear, it's such a beautiful structure, and the little cilia that I mentioned that are on it. And through this process, it's then able to act activate many of our, many of our um, cranial nerves. We have 12 cranial nerves, and 10 of them, would you believe, relate to the ear. So this shows how integrated the ear is with our nervous system. One doctor said, you know, all roads lead to Rome. It seems all nerves lead to the ear. So why are there so many connections between the ear and the nervous system? 
were these put there for decoration? I don't think so. But it's fascinating. One of the most interesting aspects of sound therapy is that it activates the vagal nerve. Now, the vagal nerve, the tenth cranial nerve, goes all the way through our thoracic and ab our abdomen, and it has a significant impact on the heart. The vagal nerve is what either puts us into the fight or flight mechanism or the calm, connected, social engagement state. And sound therapy impacts that nerve very profoundly. It helps to switch on the vagal nerve in a positive way. It also is remapping the brain. Now, in the brain, there are certain areas which pick up on each of the frequency ranges in sound therapy. And so when we're listening to sound therapy, we're building the maps in the brain and we're actually enhancing the many different parts of the brain that respond to melody, to harmony, to frequency. We're remapping the auditory cortex, and this is brain plasticity, which responds to any kind of sensory stimulus, but particularly to sound. So science now accepts brain plasticity. It took some while for that to happen, but it is accepted now in mainstream science. But I ask, is it only the brain that we're affecting? Is it actually the ear that we're enhancing the performance of? Can the ear be damaged by sound? Well, yes, we know it can. So can it be healed by sound? Well, let me give you some evidence and you can ask yourself. So I'd like to talk about tinnitus, ringing in the ears, which is a topic of great concern to people who are afflicted by this condition. It can be terribly detrimental and difficult to live with tinnitus. Now, when we have tinnitus, there's actually a faulty brain map in the auditory cortex where certain pathways are constantly firing, giving us that experience of sound, although there's no external sound source. And you can treat it with, oh, audiologists try to treat it with hearing aids. Occasionally they work for tinnitus, but they're not the right treatment. There are maskers which kind of drown out the tinnitus, but they don't treat the cause of it. Sound therapy actually treats the cause because it remaps the brain. We're building new, correct auditory maps in the brain. And usually, as a result, the tinnitus stops. Um, I remember a man who said, I had tinnitus for 45 years. Now it's gone and every day I feel like I'm being reborn. So we get really dramatic results. And we just discovered this by accident. Also, we have a remarkable effect for the cocktail party syndrome, which I mentioned my mother had, where you cannot hear in a noisy environment with background voices. And people who have that condition find that hearing aids usually don't really help. But sound therapy does. It helps people to be able to socialise and mix normally and hear what's going on, which is just an incredible change. We also have remarkable results with dizziness, particularly Menier's syndrome, because that is related, according to Tomatis, to a spasm in the stirrup muscle, sending a storm through the balance mechanism. And we see results with hearing, whether it's age-related, industrial deafness, hearing from military service, high-frequency loss, mild hearing loss or even severe hearing loss, we have seen improvements in all of these cases because the ear function can be optimised and the brain function can be optimised. I'm not saying it cures the hearing loss in all those cases, but some improvement can make a big difference to life and we often see some improvement and sometimes quite significant improvement in hearing. So we have heard a great deal in the last uh, few months that tinnitus can often be related to COVID, as Dr. Lewis alerted, alluded to. People who have tinnitus, it may get worse after COVID and indeed after the vaccines. And so many of the issues which result from COVID and from the vaccines seem to be things that sound therapy can treat. And we are seeing great results for people using this program when recovering from these symptoms if they're COVID related. So relief of tinnitus, clearer hearing, uh, recovery from dizziness, blocked ear, which is uh, often eustachian tube dysfunction, fluid block, fluid blockage, wax impaction, and the muscles just not working properly in the eustachian tube. Um, also alleviating chronic sinus infection uh, is another thing that sound therapy does for people who have that. It reduces inflammation of the sinus, uh, sinuses. Insomnia, it cuts the mind chatter and the excessive cortical excitation, congested lymph glands will respond, 
anxiety and depression. We have amazing results with these and, and many people use sound therapy just for that reason. Chronic pain, and that's a real clue to how significantly sound therapy is working on the nervous system that we've had relief of chronic pain and even phantom pain and neuralgia. And energy is a huge area. Fatigue is a massive impact of uh, COVID and of the vaccines and sound therapy is so effective in addressing fatigue by stimulating the brain, calming the nervous system and just bringing us back to normal function. So there's just a few quotes here from some of our listeners. Um, Gladys Irwin, an 86-year-old lady, said she would tune in the, her hearing aids so she could hear the birds. We have birds in Australia called bellbirds, and that's how she knew she had them tuned in. But when she used sound therapy, she could hear the bellbirds without the hearing aids. And Michelle, who had profound hearing loss, could only hear the front door slam. After sound therapy, she could hear the cupboard door slam. So that really is a significant improvement. And Flick Evans, who said after using the therapy, I've just heard my wife's microwave beep for the first time. And August Blackman, a painter who's pictured there, who said, the best thing about sound therapy of all the benefits I've had is that now I can hear my wife when she speaks to me. Isn't that lovely? So it also helps with memory and focus. And some of the great results we've seen also with uh, COVID is brain fog is a condition that often accompanies COVID. And people find after doing sound therapy that the, the brain fog just goes, it isn't there. I'm going to give you a link later where you can see a really interesting video of a lady talking about her experience of having COVID, different instances of COVID, and the really dramatic change after she'd used sound therapy that the brain fog wasn't there. But even apart from that, it's fantastic for memory and focus. And I always put it on when I sit down at my desk and I want to focus on a project. It just gets me in the zone and really helps that creativity to flow. Sleep is another remarkable area because it calms the brain and calms the mind chatter and actually changes the brain waves. And my mother, who was a chronic insomniac, said, when I lay down to sleep, miraculously I slept. In her book, which I'm going to tell you more about, uh, <clears throat> she has a whole chapter on sleep. Uh, this was originally my mother's book, and 10 years later I wrote the, the last half, the second half, to update it. So it's a very interesting book all about sound therapy and all the different conditions it treats. It's available free as an ebook on our website. I'll give you the link in a moment. So very effective for all different kinds of sleep disorders. Also for children, that's another whole area, auditory processing and learning. I have a book about sound therapy for children and it uh, talks about how by teaching the right ear to be our leading and dominant ear, we develop more efficient pathways to the brain. And it helps short-term auditory memory, linear sequential processing speed. And these things are part of autism and ADHD and dyslexia, dyspraxia and stuttering. So children who are struggling with their learning after sound therapy, we've heard them say, I don't understand. Learning was so hard before but now I can't believe how easy it is. It just switches the brain on and helps us to deal with language easily. As I mentioned, tremendous results for anxiety and depression, and this is often because of the vagus nerve, because it's waking up the ventral vagus, the social engagement nerve, which calms the whole nervous system and anxiety turns off and depression lifts. It helps so many different conditions, of course, because we are working on the brain, not just the ear. Now, people ask me, how does it compare to a hearing aid? Do I still need a hearing aid? Well, the way I see it, the hearing aid's like the walking stick and sound therapy is like the physiotherapy, and you need both, the physiotherapy and the walking stick together. If you have hearing loss, that is. If you don't have hearing loss, sound therapy will address all these other hard-to-treat conditions I've been talking about which simply are not treated by doctors or audiologists. Nothing is offered for tinnitus, for cocktail party syndrome, often for dizziness, they just don't have a solution and sound therapy fills that gap. So I'm sorry, I'm rushing a bit because I am <laughs> trying to fit a one-hour talk into 15 minutes, so I apologise for that, but I've covered no, the we gist still of have a, we, yeah. still have a full, we still have a full audience, so just keep, just keep going. Okay, this is okay that's good. Yep. That's good. <laughs> so <clears throat> if you want to use sound therapy, these are some of the things you get. We have a range of different programs. You actually get the player, 
And um, if you can see my picture, I'm holding up the actual player that we have now. It's it's quite small. It's much smaller than a mobile phone. It comes with a convenient lanyard to wear it either around your shoulder or around your neck. And uh, really good headphones are part of the program. They come with it. You get a book, a workbook. Um, there's also an option of nutrition for the ear. That's in some of our packages as if you want to get that. And there's a workbook which steps you through the program. And we give very good email support and phone support. So all of that is available. We don't just give you the program and forget, but we back it up because we're looking at a lot of complex conditions and people often have questions. So we, we really want to make sure that everyone has success from the program and that's our mission. This book, which I mentioned before, um, we it has a forward by Yehudi Menuhin. Do you still remember who Yehudi Menuhin was? The world's most famous violinist for many decades. And uh, he read my mother's book and he said, I was fascinated by this book, which I read between dawn and breakfast in one sitting. So it really is a, a really good book to read and gives you a depth of understanding about the program as well as talking about the conditions. And we later added a whole chapter of listeners' experiences, which are great to read to understand the great variety of benefits in the way that sound therapy can treat them. We have an Easter sale on at the moment, so an extra $100 off the program. And you can find that on our website and you can use that code 22BUNNY. Uh, and get an extra $100 if you would like to order the program. So I'd like to give you some links now, and then I'd love to take some questions. So <clears throat> I'm going to put these in the chat in a moment when I end my presentation. You can phone us. We're in Australia, but you can phone us, and for you it will be evening. So after 7 p.m. on the East Coast or after 4 p.m. in California, it will be not after 9 a.m. for us. And that's our American number. You can find it on our website anyway. You can call us Monday to Thursday in the evening, your time, and we'll be here. Or you can leave a message any time and we'll get back to you. So you can visit our main website and find all sorts of things, mysoundtherapy.com, uh, all the information on all the conditions I've spoken about, and you can order any of my free ebooks there. There's a special tinnitus page, which I'll give you the link to. If you want to know more about tinnitus specifically, that would be a good link to go to. I have a blog about COVID and sound therapy and tinnitus, and there's a link to that, which I'll give you. And also, if you go to our Facebook page, my latest post, which is about a conference I'm speaking at later this week, um, the video is there that I mentioned about the woman who had brain fog and the dramatic change with sound therapy. So to get all of those things, I'll stop sharing my screen now. And I'll just find the links that I want to give you and pop them into the chat. So you're shipping from Australia. I beg your pardon? You're shipping product from Australia. Yes, that's right. We ship from Australia. We only charge um, a regular shipping rate to the US, $25 for shipping. And uh, we do that all the time. So you can easily get the product there. We, we sound therapy international. And we serve people all over the world. Just got to find my chat with chat window, and I'll give you these links, and then I'll be able to take questions. So there's all the links that I just uh, mentioned. Excellent. So love to answer any questions that anybody has. Let's see. Someone just says I've had tinnitus and always <clears throat> need a fan on at nighttime. It's one of those uh, Verado. Mini fans, does that cause any undesirable effects on hearing our brain? Well, using a fan is kind of like using a masker. It's a form of tinnitus masking. And it helps because it distracts you from the tinnitus. I would recommend that you try sound therapy instead because what you're doing with the fan is you're kind of dulling the nervous system. Now, we're surrounded by that kind of noise all the time, computer hum, the fridge, the air conditioner, often that noise, and it's not beneficial to the nervous system. It's not causing extreme harm, but it's dulling. And there, there is some evidence that that masking and white noise actually reduces the brain pathways rather than building them. With sound therapy, we're building them. And believe me, it's so much better than the fan because it gives your brain something interesting to engage with, and that's what the brain needs. So... Give it a go. It really is fantastic for sleep. Whether you have tinnitus or not, um, sound therapy is, is what you need 
to help the, put the brain into the right state for sleep. Mm -hmm. And the same with any kind of white noise. Yes, that's right. What's your, what's your favorite um, classical music composer? Me, myself? I don't specifically have a well, favorite. Well, I was wondering if there are any that stand out in terms of... There are. Look, Mozart stands out. Dr. Tomata said Mozart is uh, as... The music of Mozart is like mother's milk. It nourishes us. And Mozart, you know, was an incredible <laughs> being. Um, he just had such joy and bourbon. He was steeped in music from babyhood and, and probably before when he was in the womb because his parents were musician and his music is full of joy. And we use a lot of Mozart. But we also use composers of that era like Vivaldi and Haydn and um, some Bach, uh, Telemann, beautiful music. The music we use is all uplifting and harmonious and, and positive and full of high frequencies. And uh, <clears throat> people ask me, well, is it, you know, can I just go out and buy that music and listen to it? Not exactly. That will give you some benefit, but it's the filtering process that, <clears throat> that we put the music through that makes it into sound therapy that actually has the, all of the benefits that I've been talking about because with the filtering, it's an exercise program that's really stimulating and reactivating the ear and changing the way the ear responds to sound. Mm -hmm. Love it. Um, we have a question about uh, if your station tubes are blocked due to an inflammatory process, will this help? Yes, yes. Um, chronic uh, blocked ear is an interesting uh, condition which there's just so little knowledge about in the medical profession. I've only found one good article explaining it and I've written articles about it myself. So um, now I think the person said if it's an inflammatory condition. Sound therapy will help that. It will help um, chronic ear infection and wax impaction. But very often the problem with chronic eustachian tube disorder is caused by the muscles in the ear not working well. There are muscles in the eustachian tube. There's a tensor veli palatini, the tensor levity palatini. There's about five muscles which cause the eustachian tube to open and close. And that's when you feel your ears clear. When you go up in a plane or in an elevator and your ears suddenly clear, it's because the eustachian tube has equalized the air inside with the air outside. And it should open naturally every time we yawn or swallow. But for some people it doesn't because the muscles are not working to make that process happen. And that's what sound therapy fixes. It reactivates those muscles so the eustachian tube can open and close. And when we've had people with chronic sinus and or chronic blocked ear through eustachian tube disorder, they do sound therapy. And progressively over a period of weeks, it's not instant, but gradually it clears and that your station your tube problem is resolved and then people can fly without their ears becoming blocked and having ongoing trouble some people have after flying. It really is remarkable for blocked ear or that sense of pressure in the head which often accompanies that condition. It's the only treatment that I've ever come across that really works for that chronic eustachian tube disorder. Got it. Now, <clears throat> my story is, you know, Dr. Carter has his vision issue. I have my auditory issues. When I entered first grade and they did the uh, auditory exam, they were going to put me into sign language class because they projected that if I was born with normal hearing, if I had progressed to this level, that my trajectory was I was going to be deaf by the time I was like 10 years old. And then I was a pyrotechnic and a chemist and played with all kinds of things. But my son, I irritate him because his frequencies of his voice, I can hardly hear him. I, I pick up words here and there. So it's in my right ear. And I'll just ask a very, you know, uh, naive question. Can you help me? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think so. I think so. So it, yeah, sounds, like you have it. High fre sounds like you have high frequency hearing loss, particularly in your right ear. I have zero high frequency hearing in the right ear. Yeah. Oh, I mean, goodness. I, don't, I don't mean zero, but you know, it's, yeah, it's yeah. so quite muted. significant high frequency loss in the right. Oh, yes. Yeah. Look, I think the program probably will help you, Dr. Lewis. It, it helps everyone in some way uh -huh. and uh -huh. it normally helps people to a degree with their hearing. So certainly not going to restore full hearing, but it may wake up your hearing to some degree. Uh -huh. And I think you would notice a difference. You know, people say to us, I can hear the birds again. 
I could hear the indicator clicking on my car. I never used to know that it clicked. So we do get high-frequency hearing loss being restored. So I think to some extent you probably will get that and relief for your tinnitus as well. So it's definitely, yeah. no, it's no, certainly it's recommended. Absolutely you give the something control. I'm going to do. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is we develop a switch so I can turn my hearing off when, those, when you know, he's talking to me as well. I a am, switch. I am joking. <laughs> <laughs> I am joking, but I'm not joking. Um, you know, let's see, let's see what else we, does it treat vertigo? Great question. Yes, it does. Particularly many ears vertigo, which is one of the common kinds of vertigo. There, there are two quite prevalent kinds of vertigo. One is many ears and one is benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. So they have different causes. The benign paroxysmal positional vertigo is caused by the little crystals in the ear moving, and that is characterised by uh, dizziness when you do a particular movement. So if you always feel dizzy when you roll over in bed or if you always feel dizzy when you bend down to tie your shoes, that's benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, BPPV. And that one, you should see a practitioner who will teach you the Eppley manoeuvre, how to roll the head and reposition the crystals. However, sound therapy will help to a degree because there's probably a component of your brain function and your the cerebellum in that and often the just the epi maneuver isn't sufficient so sound therapy will help with that as well with many years syndrome sound therapy is extremely effective many years is characterized by sudden unexpected dizzy attacks where you fall over you're nauseous you're in bed for days and the world is spinning and many years is not not very well understood, and they're still investigating it, but we have a clue to many of us. Dr. Tomatis believed, and I am sure he was right, that a component of many years is a spasm in the stirrup muscle in the middle ear. So the stirrup muscle goes into spasm, just a twitch or a spasm, and it sends a storm through the balance mechanism, which explains the suddenness and the severity of the dizzy attacks. It's a now, kind of storm of the ear, yeah. Yeah, a storm in the ear, exactly. Sound therapy addresses that because it rehabilitates the stirrup muscle. It normalizes the function of those two muscles in the middle ear, hammer and stirrup muscle, and so you don't get those sudden twitches or spasms and those storms going through the ear. And we've seen remarkable recovery of many years disease. And I, I remember a couple who visited me years ago. They were touring around Australia with their, their great big caravan trailer and they came in to talk to me and, and explain that the husband had had severe menus for years. And he described a condition which I've heard of more than once where it would sound, he had tinnitus as well, which is often a component of many, is low frequency tinnitus. And he said he'd lie in bed and it would sound as though there were trucks going up the hill and changing gear. I've heard of that more than once from mm. some of my listeners. And it's something to do with the ear sort of, it must be resetting and twitching and spasming with the muscle affecting the tinnitus. But anyway, all that stopped after sound therapy. They had wanted to go touring and his wife said, there was no way I could go touring with him. He'd have these awful attacks. He'd be nauseous. We just couldn't take off and do this. And he did the sound therapy and a few months later he was almost fully recovered and they were just delighted. The menias was gone. So for that vertigo, there have also been types of vertigo that just couldn't be di- diagnosed that were unknown in that category of, you know, falling between the stools and people have had remarkable recovery. If you go to our website, you'll see the testimonials and there's a section on dizziness and vertigo. You can read them. Life-changing. What, so, what, yes, it what about, vertigo. Um, what about motion sickness? I always thought that might be yes. more visually triggered than from the auditory. It's a combination it's a combination, and of course, when I showed you the cranial nerves, the ocular motor nerve is one of the ones that does relate to the ear, and and our sense of balance is not just in the ear; it's also proprioception, so the muscle, the joint receptors, and the vision. It's all all combined to give us our sense of balance. And motion sense uh, sickness is an interesting one, and sometimes people have prolonged motion sickness, which is called mal de debacmont. So bad disembarkment, and uh, it goes on for months after they get off the ship, and some people just have it when they get on the ship. And, yes, we've seen remarkable recovery from motion sickness and mal de debacmont as a result of sound therapy, getting the ear working properly and all of those sensory inputs working together. In this book about the children, I wrote a lot about sensory integration, and you see all of our 
seven or eight senses, it's not just five, uh, have to work together for us to perceive the world. And they are integrated in the cerebellum, which is at the back of the brain. It's that cauliflower-shaped area, which is very close to the brainstem and to our basic functionality. It's like the mail room, the sorting sense, uh, center for the brain. And sound therapy is very much impacting the cerebellum and the way that we integrate all of those different senses together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that might relate to balance. You mentioned vertigo, probably related to general balance issues. Absolutely. And then I had As well someone who wrote that they just, they've had tinnitus, tinnitus and they just got in a car accident and now it's in another ear, you think? A trauma-induced uh, tinnitus like that could also be potentially... Yes, negative. yes, because it's like with chronic pain, you know, there's been damage to the system and the system has to adjust. And while that's happening, the brain also has to adjust because if the brain gets stuck in the mode of chronic pain or chronic tinnitus after a trauma, then you're living with that and sound therapy rebuilds the pathways. It's so great for recovery from emotional trauma and physical trauma and post-operative trauma, you know, results from ear surgery. For example, I'll just talk for a minute about um, otosclerosis, which some people may have or have come across, which is where an overgrowth of the stirrup bone, so the calcification of the bones that leads to progressive hearing loss in a particular range, and it's often related to industrial deafness. And uh, we've had people use sound therapy who had otosclerosis but have not been operated on and it has helped tremendously by getting the muscles working again. We've also had people post stapedectomy. So the stapedectomy is an operation they do where they replace, surgically replace the stirrup bone with an artificial bone and that can help. Well, there's a risk with that and sometimes people still have trauma and and hearing loss after the operation. We've had people use sound therapy after the operation and get tremendous recovery from their hearing loss and their tinnitus. So that's definitely, you know, a surgery is a trauma to the ear. And there's, there's, it's incredible how effective the body is at healing itself. This is what I've learned from sound therapy, that if you give the ear what it needs, it can heal itself. And those four things I mentioned, protection, warmth, nutritional balance, and the right kind of stimulation. So much healing is available. And the ear is like this beacon saying, give me stimulation, I can heal the brain as well. With all that integration it has through the neural system, it can take in that stimulation and not just heal itself, but heal many, many different centers in the brain. How about chronic migraines, clinical depression, nausea? I mean, we're asking a lot. Autism spectrum (laughs) disorders. Yes, yes, I know, I know. It's it's one more quiver. People go, uh, this is snake oil. Yeah. But it's not, it's not snake oil because it's the way the ear connects to the brain. We're working on the brain. And what a beautiful access point to the brain. As I started my presentation saying sound is vibration turned into consciousness. So we're taking these beautiful stimulations from that amazing music that was given to us, bringing it into the brain with the added activation of the electronic ear and it is normalizing pressure and function and perception. So, yes, we've had tremendous results with migraines, um, tension headaches, autism. Yes, I have a young woman who'd, who'd love to be here and speak to you herself who had autism, vaccine-induced autism uh, years ago when she was young and her mother got her onto sound therapy and it helped her so much to reduce the anxiety associated with autism, to normalise the perception. She talks about it so articulately now. She's she's working getting me on podcasts at the moment because she's so passionate about what I do. So just to reiterate, these three books, I didn't show you this one before. This is my book on tinnitus. Um, that's a whole book about sound therapy and tinnitus and it talks about other uh, treatments for tinnitus as well. This is only available as an e-book. These two are available as an e-book or uh, a printed book which you can order. So this is the one about all of the impacts of sound therapy, everything that it treats, including a chapter on children, and it has a lot about tinnitus in it as well. And then this one is about all the treatments for children and auditory processing. If adults have learning difficulties or auditory processing later in life or autism indeed it will help them as well so when you go to the website you can download those for free and request them as usual the audience that listens to us extremely educated and they've asked some great questions one i think is a 
you know, a really interesting one is, you know, in when you treat infections in the body, you have a Herxheimer's reaction. So you sometimes will get worse before you get better. So there's a question along those lines. If I start this treatment, will I will I exacerbate things first before they heal or, or should I expect yeah. just sort of a healing process? It's, it's what we call the healing crisis. And you often see this with natural therapies, not so much with drugs. I mean, drugs have side effects which are negative and continue to get worse. Natural therapies, you have a healing crisis where it's like a, it's well, it's like going to the gym. I liken it to that. If you go to the gym and work out and you haven't worked out for a while, you're going to be sore for three days, especially if you overdo it. So you need to go gently. And with sound therapy, you are actually taking your ears to the gym, in effect, because you're working out the muscles. We're, we're giving a physical, actual workout to those tiny little muscles in the ear. And you have to do it carefully. And this is why we now give you a workbook with your program so that you can follow the correct listening routine. So when you get the program, you must open the workbook. We put a tab on the page that says start here to show you where to where the questionnaire is that you fill in and it will give you a listing routine to follow and if you have a number of severe conditions especially dizziness or sound sensitivity or tinnitus you'll be on the sensitive routine so you'll be going very gradually with introducing the program so that's like a gentle program at the gym where you start on the gentle weights and you gradually build up now the kind of healing crisis effects people may get is fatigue some people get tired for a week or so before they get their energy breakthrough and then they just feel as though they're plugged into the cosmos and have boundless energy. But fatigue can be uh, part of the healing crisis. A little bit of pain in the ears, especially if you overdo it as you're working those muscles. Um, sometimes a little bit more dizziness. So there are a few things. Irritation. Sometimes people get irritated and then they have a breakthrough and their brain works much better. So this is all discussed in the workbook. Uh, but, yes, it certainly can happen with sound therapy, but not negative side effects, just just that healing process which you get through in a matter of weeks. And the last question I'll take, Doris, you can't throw one in at the end here on me. I'm just kidding. Her. Um, the, the, <laughs> Sorry, I didn't quite hear No, you that's all right. It's an inside joke with someone who always asks really good questions. But, uh, oh, Doris. <laughs> yes, but how much of a time investment does it take? One month, two, mm -hmm. what happens when you stop using the device? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so doing sound therapy takes 30 seconds a day. So you put it on, you put the headphones on, and you press play. So there's no time investment. It's like wearing your glasses. You just have it on as you go about your day or while you're sleeping. Did you say, did you say 30 seconds? No. Well, it only takes 30 seconds to put it on. Okay, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Then but you carry on with your day. How much time does it take to wear glasses? Five seconds, right? Now, you have it on for about three hours a day. That's what we recommend while you're doing other things. And I think actually Doris was asking how many months does it take. So it varies. Most people will get some benefits with sleep the very first night. I've had people come to me after the first night and say, I've had the most profound sleep I've ever had. It was incredible. So sometimes that's very, very quick. The energy breakthrough, which is typical of the program, where you get this breakthrough in beautiful energy, usually happens in about, I don't know, six weeks, you know, six weeks to um, three months. Less, less, a few weeks. So you'll get the energy be, normally. This can be but with, this can be worn to bed. Yes, you can wear it to bed, but not for the first little while if you're on the sensitive routine because you would overdo it. Mm -hmm. But once you're onto all four albums, yes. So with tinnitus, it can take months. Sometimes it's quite quick, but it can take months. So you need to be persistent because you're actually remapping the brain and that takes time. You know, and there are some conditions, hearing loss, tinnitus, some of those it takes a long, a longer. And this is explained in the book. So the general introductory program is about three months, but people may need longer for certain things. And do you keep using it after that? Yes, I've been using it for 30 years. I wouldn't want to be without it. I love it. It's just like you go for a walk every day. You do sound therapy every day. You know, it's a great benefit to life. Especially in this noisy world we live in. It's very busy totally. noise. But, you know, yeah. Um, no, people have to realize that tissue regenerates at different rates. You know, some tissue turns over very quickly. Other, And I think mm. the brain is about a year. It takes a long time to turn the brain <laughs> over. So you, if you're doing something in the brain, you've got to temper your expectations and look at it as a slow and steady rebuilding process of one of the most, you know, beautiful instruments on the planet. 
Yeah. You just very don't true. you just don't paint a Picasso um, you know, with a uh coloring book and you know guides one, two, three to fill in the colors. You know, it's gonna, That's gonna, right. gonna take a but little more patience than that. But some of the results of sound therapy are quite quick because working on <clears> the <throat> muscles is relatively quick. So there are short term and longer term benefits. Let's see, see James's comment. Oh, it's been done to me, Doris. You did it. I knew you'd get it in there. Found chronic use of ibupro ibuprofen, created the tinnitus. I have tinnitus. I didn't take ibuprofen ever, so I'm not really sure. But this has been fantastic. And and you're what time is it where you are right now? Three in the morning. It's half past three in the morning. And it's not that I slept in. It's that I I should have double checked the time yesterday. Oh, God bless you for coming on. And, 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 and so. If you do tomorrow, Tuesday our time, it's going to be Wednesday morning your time. A little more, a little more reasonable. I'll make sure I get it right, and it'll be a longer presentation. Well, no, very, very pleased you you showed up and and um, reached out to me because this is beyond expectations. I'm so very excited um, about this. Thank technology. you, Dr. Lewis, and I just I just really want to thank you for what you provide here. It's phenomenal. I've been following you for months and I love the knowledge I've gained and all the benefit from you and your colleagues. It's just tremendous. Uh, we just enjoy what we're doing just like you. you know, it's, it's easy <laughs> when you love what you're doing. So yeah, uh, yeah. I thank Dr. Harshfield and Dr. Carter for filling in. They, they The preamble to your conversation was a lot of discussion about sound sound energy and how it affects physiology so we were all we were all primed and ready to go so it was, it was <laughs> a delightful way Thank uh, you. hopefully a beneficial um preamble for everybody as well so with that anybody listen to this bring your friends and family tomorrow night because this is an area of medicine that's completely completely ignored i mean uh, and so it's very important as another arrow in your quiver to it to live well and with that, we shall see you tomorrow. You will indeed. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, we need Thank to you hear for that. That was brilliant. Thank you. Really enjoyed that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right.